Starting in 1951, I Love Lucy became an enduring and beloved classic of television around the world. The show ended in 1957, but our love for Lucy and Ricky Ricardo, Little Ricky, and Fred and Ethel Mertz continued for decades. The show won five Emmy Awards and spawned countless merchandise like clothes, comics, and even jewelry. It also has the pleasure of being the first TV show to air reruns after going off air in 1957. In 1957, and for three years after, came the Lucy Desi Comedy Hour, The Lucy Show from 1962 to 68, Here's Lucy from 68 to 74, and Life with Lucy in 1986. It is still aired in over 80 countries and more than 21 languages, but it wasn't always like this. Keep watching to find out all the ugly details about the I Love Lucy cast, including Little Ricky. Lucille Ball's early life was full of tragedy. Lucille Ball was born in 1911 near Jamestown, New York. At an early age, her father died from a complication after contracting the flu and later typhoid. During the time her father was sick, her mother was pregnant with Lucille's little brother, Freddie. Unable to handle Lucille, she would tie her up with a dog leash in the backyard. Despite begging passers-by for release, no one ever helped. A short time later, when her father got typhoid, the family went into quarantine, pushing her feelings of rejection and isolation further. Her mother remarried a short time after her father died, and they moved in with her grandparents in New York. At first, Lucille Ball couldn't even score a B-roll. As a teenager on the move, Lucille Ball desired fame and fortune. When she was 15, she started making her way to New York City regularly to try out for acting roles. The teen was told again and again she had no talent for acting, but she didn't give up. Taking on a stage name, Diane Belmont, she worked odd jobs while she kept looking for stage work. With a keen eye for the market, Ball realized her niche and went for it. She noticed that the big-time producers like Eddie Cantor and Sam Goldwyn, one of the MGM studio founders, complained often that, quote, the really beautiful girls didn't want to do some of the things I did, she said. I didn't mind getting messed up. Of course, she was talking about physical comedy, which is what she became known for later in life. In 1933, Lucille was hired as the Chesterfield Cigarette Girl and started using her real name again. After three years, she started honing what she needed over 39 films and mostly unaccredited roles. Finally, she landed a role as Kitty Collins in Follow the Fleet, alongside Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. B-movies are low-budget films with relatively unknown actors to keep costs down. During that era, B-movies were often used before the primary film in a double feature. After working with Astaire and Rogers, she went back to making many more of such B-movies, becoming the queen of the B-pluses, as she jokingly put it. But due to the endless exposure brought on by B-movies, Lucille Ball was a household hit in America by 1940. Marriage and Infidelity – Trouble on the Home Front She met Desi Arnaz on the filming of Too Many Girls. It was only a small role he was playing, but they were starstruck by each other. In short time, the couple secretly eloped on November 30, 1940, but Desi was drafted into the military for World War II. At the time, Arnez was already engaged to someone else. Too many girls indeed. By 1944, Desi was out of the army and touring with his band. That year, though, marked the first, though not the last, time that Ball filed for divorce. Desi learned a thing or two about romances on the go during his time in the military, and seemed to take the expression, a girl in every port, to a new level as he toured with his Desi Arnaz orchestra. While Ball and Arnaz were able to reconcile, to a point, Arnaz kept on cheating. To keep an eye on Desi and get him off the road, Lucille insisted in 1950 that Arnez be cast as her husband in the upcoming I Love Lucy TV show. Keith Thibodeau, who played Little Ricky, wasn't surprised to later find out that Desi was cast for this reason. He was quoted as saying, Desi was a really great guy when he wasn't drinking, but as kids, we'd definitely stay away from him when he was drunk. Lucy said, TV started for me just as a means of keeping my husband Desi off the road. We were in our 11th year of marriage and wanted to have children. Despite all the cheating and tragedy she had already experienced in life, Lucille Ball's determination paid off, and Desi was able to stay off the road and get her desired family life started. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And stick around, because what we've talked about so far is nothing compared to what's coming next. Lucille suffers the deaths of her children. 
Ball had one miscarriage in 1942, another in 1949, and a third in 1950, just as I Love Lucy was on the runway powering for takeoff. The losses were devastating, stressful, and everyone who knew of the miscarriages grieved alongside the mourning couple. To cope with the loss, Lucy and Desi tried their proposed TV show act in vaudeville and pouring herself into her work must have paid off, as before filming the TV show and during the vaudeville performance, Lucille became pregnant and gave birth to her daughter Lucy. Two years later, Desi Arnaz Jr. followed, giving Lucille Ball the distinction of being the first pregnant woman to appear on primetime TV. Desi Arnaz Jr. Like father, like son. While he wasn't on set for the I Love Lucy cast, during the years after it finished, Desi Arnaz Jr. was a handful for Lucille. Being sexually active at 15, he fathered a child. She had a lot of problems with Desi Jr. because of dope and everything, Lillian Briggs Winograd said to tabloids sometime later. But she added, she never gave up on him. Even Desi Jr. knew he had problems, but he also knew of Lucille's endless support. He said, During the days I was doing drugs, they tried to help me. My father had a drinking problem. My mother was a person just like anybody else. When I went through a drug and alcohol recovery seven years ago, they went through it with me. Death and Divorce of I Love Lucy Cast Members While Lucille almost legitimately died in the famous grape-crushing episode as a fellow actress nearly drowned her on purpose, that was only the beginning of close calls. Due to Desi's infidelity, constant alcohol abuse, and mounting stress from day-to-day -day management of Desi Lou Productions, Desi and Lucille Ball split up for good in 1960. Ball returned to weekly TV and worked out an agreement where she bought him out. As sponsor of the show, Philip Morris cigarettes were in almost every scene, featured in commercial breaks and even written into the script. They were even placed and used to resemble a kind of dessert, a cast member reminisced. Sadly, this took a toll on the health of all cast members. Eventually, Desi's addiction to cigarettes contributed to his development of lung cancer. Near the end of his life, dying in a hospital in 1986, the two reunited one last time. They continued a close friendship since their divorce in 1960, and Arnez's last words showed how deep that mutual love went. I love you too, honey. Good luck with your show. At the funeral, Ball wept openly alongside her second husband, Gary Morton. Arnez wasn't the only casualty, and Ball was all alone in her later years as the only surviving adult character. Vivian Vance played Ethel Mertz, and Lucille and Vivian were the best of friends until Vivian's death. In 1977, she suffered a stroke and died from bone cancer in 1979. Vivian Vance was posthumously given a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 91. Last of all, Lucille Ball died on April 26, 1989, a few days after an emergency heart surgery due to a ruptured abdominal aorta. They tried to resuscitate her for 45 minutes to no avail. And so ended the TV production mogul and genius, comedian, and cultural icon as the last of the I Love Lucy cast. Now we want to hear from you. Could you pull yourself up by your 